Hey guys, uh, welcome back. And I am going to do a get ready with me today. It's a chatty get ready with me. Uh, if you're not into my makeup videos, thanks for stopping by. Um, I have lots of other videos on my channel that you might like. I have tons of Funko Pop videos and unboxings, but today I'm gonna focus on talking about my trip that I'm taking in about a week and some of the stuff that has been going on in my life. So if you're not interested in that, again, thanks for stopping by. Um, feel free to click that down button if you really feel like it, at least just stop by. Um, so I win because you clicked. But anyway, um, if you are interested in watching me put on some makeup and talk about my trip and some things that are going on in my life, um, grab a cup of coffee and I will try to make this coherent. Um, I don't have a beauty room. I'm not a beauty guru. I wish I had a beauty room. Um, I'm sitting out in my uh, living room right now. It's the only place that gets really enough light. Uh, I have some construction going on with my neighbors in the backyard, so you might hear some hammering. Um, and I have neighbors that talk a lot out there, so you might hear that too. But I am just gonna sit down and do this. Going to be doing a, it's not a minimal makeup look, but it's a weekend makeup look for me, so it's not everything that I would put on my face before I go to work in the morning, but I am going to be using my Anastasia Prism palette, which I got earlier this year on sale. Um, I don't use it a whole lot, but I decided this has some nice, pretty fall tones that I can use. And so the things that I'll be using, I'm very much in a glittery pumpkin spice mood. The shades that I'm going to be using are right here. I've swatched them. So you can see they're very basic, very neutral, but uh, it's Sunday. So this is what we're gonna go with. So we have, starting off, this is Unity, it's a matte. Then we have Eden, which is this pinkish salmony shade right here, also a matte. We have Parallel, which is a brown, not quite fudgy, but a nice warm brown shade. Then we have this glitter shade right here, which is Sphinx. It's kind of got a toffee kind of color to it. Then we have this coppery shade right here which is Eternal, which is not as pigmented as I would like it to be, but I will layer it on top of something. And then we have this gorgeous shade right here, which you can't really see, but it's Pyramid. And it has little flecks of, it's, it's gold, but it has little flecks of, like maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of, I don't know, just a little bit of purple maybe, I don't know. It's just, it's really gorgeous. And then right here, which you can kind of see the reflection of, this is Lucid, which will be used as the inner corner highlight. It's a white duochrome with a gold flash. So these are the colors I'm going to be using on my eyes. Now I do have hooded eyes, so you might not be able to see everything. Uh, I do have a mirror over here. Again, I've just sort of improvise with putting everything up. I don't know if it's going to fall in the middle of this video and knock me out, but uh, try, 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 trying to do a setup that works while I can still have natural light. So where to start? I'm going to Europe for three weeks. <laughs> um, I have traveled. <clears throat> I love to travel and uh, I used to, when I was in my 20s, take a week every year and try to go to a different city at least in the United States, traveled domestically, but um, either with myself or with a friend. And I have been all over the country and I've been very fortunate to be able to do that. And um, in 2006, I actually traveled with my mom to both England and Scotland. So I got to see London, which was wonderful and so full of history. We went to Liverpool. My mom is a huge Beatles fan. Um, and I, I really did like Liverpool. It was a nice little town or nice city, I guess you'd say, but it's a it was a nice, nice place. Um, and then we went to Edinburgh, which I absolutely fell in love with. Just so cool, so full of history, so just so, I don't know, walkable. I don't, it was just, it was so much fun. Um, every corner you turned was something really cool. And then we went up to Inverness because as a kid, I was really into the Loch Ness Monster and I wanted to see Loch Ness. 
So we went there and it was really nice. It was cool to be up in the highlands. We took a bus up, um, you know, saw a lot of sheep and a lot of cows and it was, it was a lot of fun. So that was my, um, that was my first European overseas vacation. And that was in 2006. It's now 2018. Um, for some reason, I just stopped traveling for a while. Um, I just, I went, I went, was going to New York City a lot. I fell in love with New York City. And um, the last time I actually went there was when uh, Hurricane Sandy happened. And uh, so that was, you know, the city actually, the city that never sleeps actually shut down for like three days. And uh, so that was, uh, I, you know what, I, I, I'm not complaining, I'm not at all complaining, um, I understand that people lost their homes and there are a lot of people less fortunate than I am. Our flights weren't cancelled, you know, other than, you know, the inconvenience of not being able to go to Dunkin' Donuts, it wasn't really terrible. Um, but I felt like it was just kind of a letdown because I love that city so much and we weren't able to do so many things. But, um, so after that, um, my nephew was born and he's five now and I haven't really traveled extensively since he was born because I wanted to be around for him. Um, I've gone to, I've gone on like one vacation in to San Diego to see my aunt and uncle, um, which is, you know, pretty low key. I sleep on their couch. I drive their car around. We go to, we go to Starbucks. It's really nice. Um, but I love San Diego. It's beautiful. So I love to travel, but I have not been able to do it a lot recently um, and also some financial things too but um, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate um, in in my life um, and I don't I'm not married I don't have kids so I don't have those responsibilities um, also uh, if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that I used to have uh, two Scottish Terriers Ewan and Rosie uh, they both died in 2017 and it, they died a month apart from each other. So that was really, really hard. Um, also my grandmother died in January of 2017. So I kind of had, uh, 2017 was not a great year and I sort of fell into this huge depression. There was a lot of things going on with work that were making me depressed and in my personal life and it just wasn't good. Um, so I kind of like hit this nadir I guess you'd say and um, so I decided that something had to change and I wasn't sure what that was <laughs> so I'm gonna start putting some stuff on uh, this is the La Roche-Posay uh, Anthelios 60 sunscreen for face um, I'm starting with this because you should always start with sunscreen. It's a real thin consistency, very liquidy, and uh, just kind of mattifies your face a little bit and keeps you protected. So I'm going to start with my eyes first before I put any other makeup on because um, as much as I love Anastasia shadows, they do have a bit of fallout, so I'll be working with that first and then cleaning up afterwards on my face. So first I'm going to take my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer, Eye Primer. This is my holy grail eye primer, I guess you'd say. Um, and it's almost gone, which is good, because now I can open the new one. It just looks like that. And I just put it on with my ring finger. So I've sort of been in this rut since 2017, not really knowing what I wanted to do, um, just knowing that I wasn't happy. Um, and maybe you've guessed that from some of my videos. Um, I kind of delved into collecting pops um, really heavily uh, in 2016, 2017, um, that was my hobby, that was my thing that I did. Um, I would go shopping every Thursday, spend, you know, $100, $200 on makeup and pops and just stuff that I didn't need, but um, it was filling this hole that I was not otherwise getting filled. 
um, but ultimately at the end of the day it's a lot of stuff and it fills up your house real fast and that gets kind of overwhelming. So next we're going to take this shade right here, Unity, and put that all over the lid. This is a Sonia Kashuk blending crease brush, but I like you know the big tip, so it's uh guys. Alright. So back to me being depressed. Okay, so going into 2018, um I still haven't figured out what it is I want to do. Um, and then uh, my parents helped me out with my new bathroom. So I got a brand new bathroom with, uh, I can actually have a bath now. Um, before that I was taking showers in a really gross bathtub that was leaving me with like five inches of water around my legs um, by the time I got done. So I have a brand new bathroom with beautiful flooring, um, a beautiful tub, beautiful sink. And so this summer I've been able to just draw a really cool bath and go and just chill for like an hour until I get pruney and watch some Netflix or read a book. And so that's been really, really helpful. Um, but I went into this pretty deep depression over the summer and to deal with it I wasn't doing healthy things I was not eating um, I wasn't talking to people I felt like I couldn't talk to people um, and I would just go for walks and I would walk for miles and miles and I've always been that way I love to walk um, and I can walk for miles and miles. I live in a very walkable city and so I can, you know, hop on a, you know, strap on a pair of shoes and, uh, go for a three hour walk or, you know, two hour bike ride or whatever it is and come back and you know, just put my headphones on, listen to Spotify or something and just zone out from my problems. Um, so... Over the summer, without really meaning to, I lost about 20 pounds, but I don't want anybody to think that that was healthy. Um, for me, it, I, I've lost the weight, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't really a healthy, um, happy thing um, for me. It was people kept saying to me, oh, you look like you've lost so much weight. It's like, I don't want to talk about it. I, I just don't want to talk about it. Um, because it wasn't like something that I decided, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. I need to lose a lot more weight. I, I get it, but um, it was not it was not like a concerted effort on my part to lose all this weight. Um, so I lost about 20 pounds, and um, I couldn't eat. I just I couldn't eat. I and I love to eat. I I'm not gonna lie, I love to eat, um, but I couldn't eat. And uh, I was just, I was miserable. I'm taking Eden and putting that in my crease. So in the midst of all of this stuff that I was going through, and I was going through it very much alone, uh, I just started to formulate a plan in my head about, you know, If I just threw caution to the wind and said F it and just wanted to do something for me, what would, what would it be that I would do? And I decided that it was, I want to get some more stamps in my passport before I turn 40. I am 38. Um, my passport did expire in 2016. I got it renewed in 2017 with the intention of maybe going to Italy or something like that. That never happened. So I realized that um, this fall, right now actually, I would have quite a bit of free time in my job. It gets really slow and um, there's not a whole lot to do in October. <laughs> 
but um, I know that looks messy, but it'll we'll fix it later. So that is my crease. Anyway, so I decided um, that I was going to have some time and I sort of made up this plan in my head that I was going to go and uh, land somewhere in Europe, make my way through a bunch of countries by train and tr just try to like piece together this vacation and then somehow end up in the last country and fly home. So that was in my head. And then my aunt came home, um, the one who lives in San Diego, she came home for a weekend and I sat down and talked to her. And she was the first person that I was able to really sit down and talk to. And I told her about my plan and it finally just all sort of gelled in my head and I decided this is what I'm gonna do. So I went and bought two plane tickets and that is what I'm going to do. So. My plan is to, and what I have scheduled so far, <laughs> um, I am going to fly in to Barcelona via London, Gatwick. Um, I am going to stay a few days in Barcelona. I am going to take a train to Paris. I'm going to spend five days in Paris. I'm going to take a train to Amsterdam and spend three days in Amsterdam. I'm going to take a train to Berlin and spend two days in Berlin. And then I'm going to take a train to Copenhagen or Copenhagen, but that's not actually how you say it. Um, and spend two days there and fly home. So that all in all is three weeks. And it's terrifying and overwhelming, but also I feel so amazingly blessed to be able to live in an age where I can basically sit down with my phone and plan this whole thing and it's all done. All I have to do is get there. Use Google Flights to help me figure out which plane to take there and which plane to take back. I'm going to take Parallel a brown matte shade on a Sigma small tapered blending E45. This is from the Angelica Nyquist set. Again, sorry if I say that name wrong. All I know is her name is Angie. Yeah, I am uh, starting my trip off to Barcelona in Spain. Um, and I'm very inspired by this uh, Instagrammer that I follow, and she's a she owns two Scotty dogs. She's not a makeup, she's not like a lifestyle grammar or anything. She's just uh, she's an incredibly cool person who owns two Scotty dogs, and she lives in Barcelona. And she puts out videos of her and her two dogs all the time, and it just made me fall in love with the place and want to see more. Barcelona is not a place I ever thought that I would, it was never on the list of things that I wanted to see, but um, ever since I decided that I wanted to start my trip there, I've been looking into the history and stuff and I'm, I'm really fascinated. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, I'm learning about, uh, you know, that most of them see themselves as uh, Catalans first, or ca Catalan culture and Catalan language. Um, and, you know, there's that separatist movement and everything else. But, uh, so that's that's been really interesting and I'm really um, excited to see. I'm staying in the Gothic Quarter. Um, and I plan on seeing this trip. I don't plan on doing a whole lot of walking around in museums and looking at art. Um, I love doing that, but not this trip. I want it to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, I want to kind of hang out in cafes and walk around when I need to walk around and buy what I need to buy and um, not worry about missing things. So there are a few things on my list. I would love to see the Sagrada Familia um, from Gaudi and I want to see there's a there's a walking tour of the Gothic Quarter that you can do and I want to see La Rambla um, and uh, just just walk around and I want to go to the beach because I want to say I've been on the Mediterranean 
I've got two full days to do that. Um, for every place that I am going to, I've left myself a full day for travel to and from, so I don't have to feel like if the train is late or anything like that, that I've missed out on opportunities to do anything. Um, this is also the first time I've used Airbnb for anything, and I don't know how to feel about that. Um, uh, it, Airbnb is so easy, and or at least for me it is. Uh, I, um, you know, I've sort of been learning that it's not always easy for other people to use it, and so um, I feel a bit conflicted about that, but end of the day, it's a lot cheaper, a lot easier option for someone like me. Um, so, and I, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I might get to the end of this trip and decide I'm never using Airbnb again. Who knows? Um, but I'm gonna try it, see how it works, um, you know, understanding that there are still significant problems with regulation and discrimination and, and that kind of thing, but uh, for now, we're, we're gonna see how it goes. I am staying Airbnb with people. Um, some of them have dogs, which is so cool, and it's mostly just a single room for a single person like me. Um, and so it's pretty easy for someone like me to get a room because it's just me. And, um, you know, I understand that I have a privilege in certain ways that other people don't. So it's relatively easy for me to be able to use Airbnb, Airbnb and just get a room. Um, I understand it's not easy for other people to do that though. So anyway, I've been reading a book about startups and how Airbnb is not always the most, it's, it's complicated, basically. I don't know, in my eyes anyway. Maybe for other people it's not complicated at all. We've got this one, this one, and this one, so now we're going to do this coppery shade right here, which is Sphinx. And we are going to put that on the outer part of the lid. All right. So it's been a little bit, it's been easy, but it's also been a little bit nerve wracking to try to figure out um, which train to take and do I need to get my card validated um, before I get on the train or can I get my tickets delivered through e-tickets or how early do I need to get to the train station? Do I have to go through security? Um, it, it, a little bit like so I've just been on Google and Google Maps like furiously going through Google Street View to try to figure out where it is I need exactly to go and where I can go pick up tickets for the Metro or the Underground or the U-Bahn or the S-Bahn or the whatever um, so but you know like I said it's kind of like got a little bit of fallout there so it's it's been kind of like this cool but terrifying puzzle to put together um, and, you know, I've been to cities that have good public transportation, um, Seattle for one, uh, New York used to, but apparently the subway has just gotten a lot worse since I've been there. Um, and I've been to Boston, which has a good, at least when I was there, I had a good T, and I've been on the L in Chicago. So I'm, I'm, I'm used to visiting big cities that have good public transportation and, uh, that doesn't bother me. I don't. I don't do Uber. Um, I've done Lyft a couple of times when I've been in Milwaukee with a friend, but other than that, I don't tend to do ride sharing or taxis. Uh, I've done taxis in New York when we need to go to the airport, but other than that, it's pretty much public transportation or walking. So I'm pretty familiar with that. It's just like the ways that you have to. You know, they have all these things like. If you don't validate your ticket and you get caught by this plainclothes officer, you're going to have to pay a fine of 60 euros. And it's just like, can, do you just have a thing that I can swipe and get on and go where I need to go? And So that is a bit uneven, but it's there. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to go into Eternal, the copper one. We we'll use this really grody Royal and Langnickel brush. BX80. 
it's just a packing brush, I guess. Also, I'm a little bit nervous about some of the places, not not the people that I'm staying with or the places that I'm staying, I, I know where they are, but like making sure that I get there on time and check in and I'm not rude. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the rude American just bouncing my way through Europe being an a-hole. Um, that's not why I wanna go. I wanna go to be somewhere else and appreciate being somewhere else. Um, and hear a different language and um, meet different people. Uh, not just uh, expect to uh, be drinking Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes all the way through. <laughs> um, you know, go to go to a cafe in Paris. Go to uh, maybe I don't know. Um, I don't plan on doing any drug tourism in An Amsterdam. That's not why I'm going to Amsterdam. I'm going to Amsterdam because I love the old masters. I love Vermeer and I love Rembrandt. And I kind of want to, I hopefully will get to see the Anne Frank house. Um, they have some rules and tickets that you have to get ahead of time. So we'll see. But um, the Diary of Anne Frank was one of the first books that I ever read when I was a child. And so that... Um, she really means a lot to me, so I want to go see that house. I mean, Paris, I just, um, what can you say about Paris? It's just so seminal in history, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's so full of history, and um, next time I'm going to be using Pyramid, which is the golder shade. This is an It Cosmetics fluffy crease brush. It's clean. That's why I'm using it. Um, and I'm going to put that a little bit over both of these shades. Um, so I, I do want to see, I, I don't want to go up in the Eiffel Tower, but I want to see the Eiffel Tower. Um, I want to go see the Musée d'Orsay. I'm not so interested in the Louvre. Um, not that I'm too good for the Louvre, I would love to see the Mona Lisa, and that, but I don't want to be standing in a hall with 50 other people behind all of their cell phones and a piece of glass and it's like, oh, I, I could have just got a postcard. Um, that doesn't, yeah. The Louvre just seems like so overcrowded and, um, I mean, for a reason. It has masterpieces in it, but I just don't want to deal with that right now, so. Um, and I love Degas, um, I have since I was a teen, and so Musée d'Orsay has a lot of Impressionists, a lot of his work, so I would rather see that. I would want to go see the Catacombs, which is, I know, a little weird, but um, it looked really, really cool and kind of creepy, and I like that kind of stuff, and it's almost Halloween, so yeah, I'm going to go see the Catacombs. Um, the Champs Elysees, uh, the Tuileries, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, just kind of go down that whole area up to the Arc de Triomphe. Um, and then just see what I can see, basically. Just take five days and wander around Paris. And I've been trying to learn a little bit of French. Um, I don't. I don't have any background in it, but I, you know, I want to at least try to communicate um, in their language without just demanding, I'm an American, tell me where the bathroom is. So I've been trying to learn a few phrases, um, but it's not really sticking. So we'll see how that goes. The other thing is I'm always worried about where I'm going to be able to go to the bathroom because when I went to London, you didn't have to pay all the at least some places you probably have to pay but when I was there you didn't really have to pay you just had to go find a pub but you couldn't go into like a mall you couldn't go into like a Starbucks there was no fast food joint you know like here where you just pop into a Dunkin Donuts use the bathroom and they don't care if you buy something in London it was more difficult to do that and then um, throughout most of at least in Paris and quite a few places you actually have to pay to go to the bathroom which 
you know, I, I get it, but at the same time, it's like, it's making me really nervous. <laughs> Amsterdam, I already talked about why I want to go there. It's, uh, plus it just looks really beautiful. Um, looks like a wonderful place to do some walking tours and maybe rent a bike or something like that. And the canals, I want to see the canals and yeah. Um, Berlin, I feel like, um, my family, uh, at least on my dad's side, a lot of it comes from Germany. So, um, early, as far as we know, um, was my grandfather who was born in the 1800s who came over here, um, as a baby and was left on the doorstep of an orphanage. Um, we, we think he's, we know he's from Germany, or at least he spoke German most of his life. Um, so I don't, we don't know really where we come from in Germany, um, but people always talk about Berlin, like it's this up and coming place. It's really cool, really, um, really trendy, really hip and really affordable. So I'm been looking around, um, uh, there's some cool museums. I would like to see the uh, Brandenburg Gates, the Tiergarten. Um, I'm staying in a place called Prenzlauerberg, um, which is on the eastern side of Berlin. So I want to see pieces of the Berlin Wall. Um, and uh, again, just sort of walk around and find a place to sit down and have a drink. Um, and yeah, so I'm not really sure what I want to do in Berlin, but just just look and see what's what's there. So next we're going to go in with Lucid in the inner corner and maybe on the brow bone. And I'm not going to be using liner or lashes because I don't do that. I don't wear lashes um, and I'm not doing mascara because I just don't wear it on the weekend. I don't like to clean it off on the weekend. It just doesn't fit with my aesthetic for the weekend. Then Copenhagen, um, again, it's one of those places they say it's really trip, really hip, really trendy. And um, you go on Instagram and it there's so many, there's so much beautiful design there. Um, easy to get around, I guess. And so, you know, I want to see a few things like um, there's this really cool place called the Round Tower that looks really cool. A lot of photographs of it. Um, there's a lot of castles, a lot of palaces um, that you can see. Uh, there's this cool harbor that you can go to. Um, I don't know, I, I sound like such a total noob, but, you know, mostly this vacation is just about me being able to explore and not have a set schedule and not say I need to be here, here, and here. You know, we can save that for when I need to get on the train and on the plane and everything else. That's my European vacation. All of those places use euros except for Copenhagen. They use their own Danish kroner. So still have to work out how I'm going to change my money when I get there, but I would assume it's not that difficult. I don't know. So that is all the um, fallish colors from my prism palette. Again, it's all of these colors right here. On my eyes, I will uh, try to show a better picture in full light later. I have a bunch of fallout right here. Um, I got a little thing that I can get rid of all of that. This is just about me basically setting myself a goal and seeing if I can do it. Can I land in Barcelona and make my way by myself through five countries? Well, I think I go through Belgium on the way to uh, Amsterdam, so it's more countries than that, but um, just see if I can get there and if I can do it and if I can be self-sufficient and be able to ask people questions because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a super shy person. I don't like to talk to people. I'm not social at all. Um, and I'm gonna have to ask for help at some point. So and I'm gonna have to ask for it in another language. I'm terrified, but also excited. <laughs> so this has been 
what I've been had what I've had on my mind for the last two or three months um, I have as you know been on a no buy for makeup and pops I've bought like one pop and the other day I did buy two items from the wet and wild dragon collection okay so I broke whatever um, but basically I've been trying to stick to a real real strict budget just so that I am able to be to do this um, to make this happen and not feel overwhelmed I am not going to be using any uh, foundation, just concealer under that. I'm going to use this Skin Illuminator from number 7. I haven't used it in a while. Well, that's what it looks like. I haven't loaded up my Starbucks card. I haven't been shopping on Thursday nights. I've um, been trying to be real careful about the groceries that I buy and not going out and that kind of thing so it's been a summer of I wouldn't quite say it's been a summer of deprivation it's not like I'm it's, you know it's not like I'm this poor unfortunate soul I'm doing this by choice um, but it's been a summer that's you know kind of tested me as I you know I'm kind of a spoiled girl. Um, I like to spend money on myself. I'm the only one that I have to spend it on. Um, so it's been been a little bit of a challenge, and I, that probably sounds really silly to some people, but that, that's just me. Next, I'm going to use this uh, Master Conceal uh, by Face Studio from Maybelline. This is number 10, Fair. So I've been learning a lot about myself, which is good, what I can take and what I can't and what I can live without and what makes me feel good and what makes me feel miserable and uh, just learning to live with uncertainty and anxiety and uh, all those kinds of things. So it's been that kind of summer. So, you know, I'll blend this out with my uh, Real Techniques concealer brush. This is not my favorite concealer, um, but it's what I'm working with on the weekend. So usually I use the number seven clicky pen thing, which I love, but I don't think I think I'm gonna run out of that before um, next week and I don't want to have to repurchase so I think I'm gonna be taking either this or another concealer that I have with me on my trip so. um, that's the other thing is packing how do you pack for three weeks um, I don't know I'm still figuring it out I've got a you know I got a big suitcase for clothes and stuff and kind of decided what makeup I'm gonna take um, that's the thing is now that I have I have a makeup routine and I have a skincare routine and I don't want to like go three weeks without that but it's gonna have to be significantly reduced because I don't want to drag that all over Europe um, yeah so we'll see how that goes I've been trying to get little minis and things um, of nice stuff um, We'll see how that all works out, and hopefully I will not lose any of my luggage when I'm there. Got really bright. I hate it when it does that. Anyway. I don't even know if this video is going to be watchable, but I'm going to put it up anyway. And I'm not doing my brows either. I just don't feel like doing them on the weekend. I just want some color, some sparkle in my eyes and my cheeks and my lips and some blurring on my face. So I've been pretty relaxed about the whole planning thing. Again, it's been fun to plan, 
Um, I do have a little bit of anxiety because just because I hate being in airports and I worry about losing luggage and making it to the train on time and being where I need to be and getting on the right and subway and you know all of that that's just normal um, but I'm sure as this week this will be my last week here before my trip and I'm sure I the anxiety will set in and I will be a total mess but that's what I have to go through to get what I need to do to get to do what I need to do something like that my master fix setting and perfecting loose powder not my favorite powder either but I've run out of my favorite powder so this is what it will be and this is again real techniques powder brush setting brush whatever so my goal has just been basically to get to Europe get some stamps on my passport be away from home for a little while be on my own truly truly on my own um, and see how I fare so we'll see that's been my life for the last two years two months whatever that's just that's what I've been going through um, again I, I haven't been posting a lot because I'm not shopping also just you know not inspired um, it's been hard for me to get in front of a camera especially you know I don't have great lighting I make mistakes I go out of frame um, there's too much glare you know I just I do this on my phone I do this on my iPhone um, I edit everything on my iPhone, I upload everything on my iPhone. Um, I try to speak up, but I have a soft voice, and so you can't always hear me. I do try to turn up the volume like around 150 or 200 percent when I edit, just so you can hear me a little bit more. Um, and I say um a lot. Oh well. But you know, you just, uh, you, you work on a video and you put it up and, um, you know, like eight people watch it. And I, I'm so grateful that even eight people will watch a video of mine, especially something this long and this boring. Um, I'm not the most exciting person in the world, but I like to come on here and make videos just because it's a creative outlet and I like to share what I love, which is I love pops, I love makeup, I love collecting, I love Star Wars. Um, and my channel is all over the place, I know that, um, and it's going to continue to remain all over the place because that is who I am. Um, it's not a pop channel, it's not a makeup channel, it's not a book channel, but I incorporate all of those things into my channel because that is my life and that is what I like to share. That's enough powder for the weekend. We're good. All right. Next, we're going to do some bronzing. I don't normally bronze on the weekend, but I forgot my bronzer brush. Darn it. Bronzer brush. This is Visanti. I got it in a boxy charm years ago. This is the Anastasia in Rosewood bronzing powder. I absolutely adore this powder. You can see I got it this spring and I've already hit major, major pan on it. I adore this powder. I think it looks nice on me, but who knows? Maybe people just think I look like a red clown, but I really like it. And I'm not really, I'm not sculpting, I'm just bronzing to put some color into my face because I don't have a lot of color in my face. Very pale. So I don't get a lot of sun. So yeah, I'm gonna have uh, quite a bit of time to just walk around and think about things and see things and then I'll be taking some really long train rides. Some train rides. I think the one from Berlin to Copenhagen is almost as long as the flight from Chicago to London. So I'm bringing quite a few books. I realize 
um, because all the books that I want to read are fairly new or just came out. They're actually brand new, most of them. They're all hard covers, so it's not like a book you just slip in your purse. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of reading on trains and uh, probably putting most of these books in my check-in luggage and then carrying one or two with me in my carry-on luggage. Um, that is bronze. So some of the books I'm going to be bringing with me are Allie Smith, Winter. Um, I read the book Autumn by her earlier this year and I fell in love with her and her style of writing. It's absolutely wonderful and I am Looking forward to digging into this when I when I get to uh, Barcelona. This is some nonfiction called "Winners Take All" by Anand Giri Haradas. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's a nonfiction book about uh, startup culture and um, entrepreneurialism and how it doesn't always work and doesn't always it, it's. It's a really interesting, thought-provoking book. Um, and it does actually make me feel really bad about my decision to use Airbnb, but I guess that's my problem. Then we have another one, another nonfiction, The Personality Brokers by Merva Emery. It's about the two women who created the Myers-Briggs personality test. Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, fiction mystery um, on a lot of bestseller lists. I guess something we, Reese Witherspoon really liked this or something like that, but um, it, it looks really, really interesting. It's kind of set down south um, and it's about a young girl and a mystery, so. And we have Bill Cunningham, Fashion Climbing. This is um, the unpublished memoir that he wrote and was found after he died. Um, I used to follow his photography in the New York Times when I was really, really, really into fashion. And it just, it looks absolutely fascinating. So, yeah, looking forward to reading this when I'm in Paris. And then a fiction book called Flights by Olga Tok Tokarczuk. I believe she's Polish and I think she won the Man Booker Prize. Yeah, she is from Poland. Um, and uh, it's just a collection of stories about people move, uh, people being in transit and moving around to different places. It seems to jump around in time and in location and it's about travel but mostly travel of the mind I guess so it seems like the perfect thing for me to be reading um, so those are what the six hardcover books that I plan on taking with me um, I am also taking with me my soft glam palette and I think I'm going to also take with me my UD Urban Decay Beached Palette for eyeshadow. Uh, I love my Soft Glam Palette and it's the most usable palette, um, but the Beached Palette has those neutral tones plus those two blues. I love blues, um, so I wanted to bring a little bit of color with me, but also just keep it simple. I am going to use some blush. This is the Anastasia Blush Trio in Peachy Love, and I'm going to be using, let's see here, I'm going to use this one right here, Miami. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. Sometimes I'll just use all three, but sometimes I just like to use one. And I really do adore this blush. It's the only time you'll see me smile is when I put on blush. Let me know, do you guys uh, travel a lot? Do you live in another country where you wish you could travel a lot? Or is there, are there places that you want to see that you hope to get to someday? Your sort of bucket list? I don't have, a, I hate the term bucket list. I don't have a bucket list. I just have things I want to do. This is the 
Master Chrome Highlighter in Molten Rose Gold. I adore this highlighter. You can see I've already hit Major Pan on it. It's so good. I've never, I just got into highlighter this year and I can't, I can't stop. Like I want everything highlighted on my face. Even if I'm too old for highlight, even if it's not a thing anymore, I don't care. I love it. I adore it. It makes me feel good and fun. And I don't care if it emphasizes texture. I just like the way it's really shiny on my face. And you can kind of turn your face and see little things. See, like, see that? See that? Like, yes. Are you a world traveler? Do you have any tips and tricks or things that you think I should see in any of these places? Again, I'm going to Barcelona, Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, and Copenhagen. So let me know what your thoughts are on uh, travel, on YouTube, um, on makeup, on books, on anything. I love to talk to you guys. You guys are so cool. Setting spray. So this is MAC Fix Plus in the coconut scent. I adore this stuff. It's so nice. We are going to top it off with the number seven high shine lip gloss in Sparkling Rose. So just a very, it's basically a clear lip gloss with a lot of pinky glitter in it. But it hits the light on your lips just right and it looks gorgeous. Not much there, but you see it on the lips. And my face looks really wet right now, but that's fine, it'll dry. So I really love talking to you guys. I love when you leave me comments and um, I love hearing from you. Let me know what's going on with you guys and what you think and how your day is going. And I am gonna have to try to edit this video down and make it somewhat watchable. We'll see. And uh, Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you made it all the way through this video, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, I have a small band of watchers, but you guys are always awesome and always so kind. And I'll get back to making pop videos and haul videos and makeup videos uh, after my trip. I might put up, I, I don't vlog, but I'm very, I'm very, I'm way too shy to vlog, um, but I might put up something from each country. I'm going to try to do that, although I don't know how much uh, memory my phone has and how much battery life I have, so we'll see. Um, but other than that, this is probably going to be my last video. Mosquito? It's probably going to be my last video before I take off, and so I wanted to let you guys know what was going on and say Hello and goodbye, and um, I uh, hope to see you guys soon. So, again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.